Hi, I'm Dr. Angela McBurdy of DrFlute.com, and today's practice with me is Cantabile at Presto by Giorgio Nisco, The Presto. I've already taught through the Cantabile, and so today we're going to tackle the Presto. Now, one of the hardest parts of the Presto is this very beginning. And if you get the very beginning, you've then got it through the rest of the piece because this tonguing very short, very fast on your very low notes occurs multiple times through the Presto. So it's very important that you understand how to get this tonguing out, how to do it, and accomplish it. So at the beginning here, what usually happens, I've taught through this from so many times with my students, uh, in New York State, this piece is one of their solo contest pieces, so I've had a number of students play it. What happens here at the beginning is most of the time it's this. It's only air that comes out. And so that's what makes it tricky. How do you get the tone to respond? Um, unless you've done a lot of work in your low register, usually what happens is that it's tone, when you tongue down there, it's sound, it's air and then tone. And you don't get the sound of the D right away. And that's very important here, because if not, your whole beginning of your presto, it just messes up and it doesn't sound as good. It sets the pace for the rest of it and then it keeps recurring. So here's the key. Don't blow any air. You have to use very little air. You don't even think about blowing. What, um, uh, what you really want to do is basically hold your breath use the air that's in your mouth. So if I try to do that, if I do that a couple times, as you can see, I had to let out my air in order for me to get more oxygen in. So it's the little bit of air that you can use. Always, always, always there's too much air. So if I hold it all in, especially that one. That's a really hard one to do. So when you go to the and then you have to go back down to that low D, almost everybody that I've taught does this. So it, it, that low one, you, you just want to keep the air going because, oh, as soon as you get up to that C sharp and D, you're allowed to use a little bit more air. So even if they've accomplished the beginning low Ds, on that double tonguing, then they're blowing too much air and they shoot their wad on that low D and then it doesn't respond. So the first thing that you need to do is just practice not blowing air. Just do that so many times so that it just is natural to not use air. Don't let, you want to take your air from your stomach and then tighten your stomach muscles and your rib cage, your expanded rib cage, and then don't blow. Just use the air that's in your mouth already to get that sound to come out. Okay, now let's go past that because I'm going to play that and we'll get to the next section. <laughs> And now at this part, okay, now if you take a look at your music and you see, okay, from the beginning to that spot is one section. Look at the next section. It starts exactly the same way. But when you get to... Uh, so in, in this first section, which would be measure 67, 68, me pick up into 69. So pick up into 69 does this. Okay, it starts the same again. The same low notes, the same low tonguing, 
And then when it get, gets to that section here, you're up. Now, instead of going DD, you're doing GG. So we've now bumped it up a notch. And so the intensity grows and the excitement grows on this piece. <laughs> So it's really cool how we do the same opening, but somehow in those little areas right there and that pick up into 69 and this measure would be, oh, pick up into what, 85 maybe. Uh, we now have gone up uh, D, E, F sharp, G. We've gone up a fourth from there. So um, now let's talk about this area. <laughs> I'll do that again. Uh, then it occurs again. Now we've gone up. That's on a D. And then the next time, it's G. All right. There are these little hairpins. We call that when you, you, know, you start loud, you get soft, and then all of a sudden you have to get loud again and then get back to soft. So you're going... All right, they're a little bit tricky. If I go back and start in measure 72, I'm going to just try to open up a little bit more here to get that crescendo. And I might even try to get a little buzzier into the mouthpiece. So rather than think louder, I'm thinking maybe a different sound, a little bit more edge into my sound, and that gives the illusion of being louder. I might actually be a little bit louder, but that's not what I'm thinking. So I'm going to start. So if you could see, I just got down into that cutting edge here a little bit more. Maybe I opened my embouchure slightly more to get that crescendo. And I'll do the same thing uh, when it occurs again in uh, 86, 87, 88 maybe. And then I will just taper off the end and it seems like I'm doing the diminuendo that's written in there. Okay, so those are your two sections. You start off, you're building the suspense, and then you move into the next area, which it seems like we're just repeating until we do G, G instead of D, D. And now the suspense is really building. So it's really cool in there. Okay, now we're going into the pickup into 93. Okay, so the only tricky thing about that is hitting that low C when you get down there. It's just you've got to aim that finger, make sure you're covering, and get that low C as best you can. And again, um, because you start off higher, you're blowing too much air by the time you get down to that low C. And so that's what happens. You've got to hold back the air. You need a little bit more air for the higher notes, but then as you get lower, hold it in, hold it in so that you can just really land on that C. So the less I blow, the better that C is going to come out. Now, as we move into this next part, it's piano. So you've just done this da di da di da di da di dum forte, and now you've got to start a little softer. That is a really tricky thing. The E staccato into the F. And that is worth practicing just by itself a whole bunch of times. Again, what do you have to do? Hold in that air. The more air you blow, the harder it is. Right? and it will come out. And I'm not even worried about playing softly. It's the low register. It's going to be soft. So I just don't even worry about that. I just try to nail that E to the F. Okay, now we've got some 16th notes here. And we're crescendoing at the end. So just hold it back a little bit. 
Now let's talk about technique. How do you work on your 16th note sections? And uh, there are 16th note sections all the way through here. Let me give you a few uh, pointers in how to work on 16th notes and a lot of technique. Now uh, I would go through and just practice pull out 16th note groups, like the top of the next page, um, even the sort of the uh, slurs there at, uh, what measure would that be, uh, 113? And then all the way through the rest of it, we've got 16th note patterns. So here's what you need to do to work on your 16th notes. I'm gonna just give you the rundown and then I'll demonstrate it a little bit, but then or I'm going to say that applies to all the 16th note sections that there are. Ex one little exception are repeated notes. This method that I'm going to teach you is a little tricky to do, and you'll see why on the repeated notes. Okay, so in order to work on your 16th note sections, you need your lovely Taffanel and Gobert. And mine's falling completely apart here. But what we need this for, this is on exercise number one. We need it for all the articulations that are going across the top here. And I have my students memorize these articulations. If you know them, more power to you. If you have the book, get it out. Uh, and if you don't, get that book, but I'm gonna tell you what it is and you'll understand the method here. Okay, I'm also gonna pull up my metronome because you're gonna need them both. Now let's look at the, um, I'm going to turn back here, the 16th notes uh, after 93, so that E to F. Just that little bit right there. So I'm going to take my metronome and say, you know, maybe in the end I want this to be at 120, say, that's where it, I'm not going to put my metronome on 120 right now. I'm going to take it down to, um, I don't know, It's it, you go as low as you need to to play it perfectly. Okay, that is a big key. I want to go as slow as I need to to play it perfectly. Now, those are articulations that you see in number one of your Taffanel and Gobert. We're going to use them with the metronome on the 16th notes spots. So I'm gonna take away the articulation that's written there, which is mostly slur, just slurring your groups of eight through there. And I'm going to say, okay, so number one articulation in Taffanel and Gobert is slurring groups of eight, and then number two is slurring groups of four. So I'm gonna skip that right now because I, that's what I've done through here. But I'm gonna put my metronome on. Da, 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 da. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one. And I'm now going to do the next one, which is slur three, tongue one. I'm going to stay with that. I'm going to do it two times. Then I'm going to do tongue one, slur three, because that's the next one. And you're making sure that you don't rush through that, that you're keeping very steady, you're with that, because you're training your fingers and your eyes to know what those notes are, to play evenly, all the muscles are gonna work the same. Now, what I would do after that, so I would do all, there's 10 articulations, I would do all 10 articulations at 65, and then I might move it to 70 and do all 10 articulations. Now, I might group like that group of 16th nodes and um, turn the page and do the two top of the, the two top uh, 16th note groupings there in the same way. So I'm gonna do slur three tongue one there, turn the page, slur three tongue one, slur three, then I'm gonna go back, going to keep it on this, do them all two, two times through, or however many times you need to in order to play that articulation great. Now, what the strength of this type of practicing is that it gets your eyes to rest on different notes. Because your tongue is tonguing different notes, your eyes rest on different notes, and you learn it better. You really learn what those notes are. 
So that is how I would suggest you practice any of those articulation pa passages uh, all the way through. So I will bring that up again, but I'm not going to uh, go through that method again. That's just how you're going to do it. Okay. Now, as you're playing through this area, you want to keep it soft, but keep your air pressure, keep your pressure, all that support that you have in here through these runs so that they don't fall flat. Okay. I did nothing. I had no support, but if I have that support, so I'm going to breathe, tighten my muscles. It helps me get through that crescendo also without using too much air. So I'm able to keep a hold of all that air. And then that uh, pressure gives me that crescendo at the end. And as you go up that, and you might want to just practice the last two groups with the crescendo. So you really feel what that crescendo is. You can determine where do you need to start? What's the level of your sound as you begin that crescendo and then all, all the way through that crescendo. After that comes your high A flat. And this is where the method doesn't work terribly well because we have too many repeated notes, right? When you have too many repeated notes, you can't exactly slur three in tongue one. Um, I would suggest that you practice this just double tonguing all of it because the hardest part of this is that it rushes. Your fingers rush and I feel it wanting to rush. Um, so I'm going to practice just double tonguing everything. Another thing, when you're double tonguing, see if you can get those little accents that are in there. Let's try that again. I also want to tell you that on high A flats, they are notoriously sharp. We often put down these two notes on a high uh, keys on a high A flat. It helps bring the pitch down. Uh, if any time I can, that's how I play an A flat. In fact, I just say that's that's a high A flat. Sometimes uh, music is too fast and you don't have time to put those two fingers down. But here, you're starting right off. You can put those two fingers down. So I'm going to double tongue and do those accents. If you really try, and then even when you're starting to do the slurring, to uh, keep those accents in mind and try to do them a little bit uh, with your air, it'll keep you from rushing because there's something for you to hold on to. And that's the key. Your eyes and your tongue need something to hold on to or else they just start getting away from you. So I'm going to just practice that a couple times and I might do it with a metronome too, to make sure that I'm keeping the uh, tempo exactly steady and not in fact rushing. And then when I feel like, okay, I'm really, I'm moving up a little faster, a little faster, a little faster. Now I'm going to see what I can do up to the, Oh, maybe not quite up to the tempo I want to do it at. I tried to do those accents. So now I'm doing them with my air, right? A breath accent because you don't have a ta on any of those. Those are always slurred into. So could you hear my breath accents on there? I, I think you could. I mean, I felt like I was doing them and I could hear them. All right, let's turn the page. So again, we've got these 16th note groupings on these two top three lines and you want to do them with that practice process that I told you about. Use all your articulations from your Taffanel and Gobert. Put your metronome on. Do it really slow. Work at it until you feel so very comfortable at that tempo and then you move the tempo up. Now we'll say, okay, you've kind of got it in your fingers. Let's just talk about now. How are you going to play it? It's a fun little part. It's really building the excitement of this whole piece. I love these two lines. They're maybe a little bit challenging, but they're really fun. So you have these um, uh, accents on your first of every four as you're going through these. Uh, and you don't get to tongue them. You have to just do them with your air. <laughs> it 
except for when it's the da 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 those slur two slur two parts. You definitely have to put your tongue in there. Um, you're just gonna keep it forte as you go up that da 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 da. Keep it forte all the way up so that your trill is just very intense and just da 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 because you get to contrast that with 113, measure 113, and all of a sudden you're piano and you're just skipping down. All right, now we're at measure 113. These are grouped in triplets, so they look like they would be doing. And they, in fact, do sound like that. However, they're not triplets. They are 16th notes. They are in groups of four. It's the slurs that make them sound like they are, uh, that they are in triplets. Okay. The key to this is you think back, what are your 16th notes? What is the tempo that you're doing your 16th notes in? So if I'm doing ya da dee da 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 dee da 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 dee da 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 dee da the line above it, that's how I'm going to play those. They're going to come out to an audience like I'm playing triplets, but I'm going to keep those 16th notes steady. I'm just grouping them differently, and that gives the illusion that now we're playing triplets. I would practice those with that practice process making sure you do all, take off those slurs, make sure you learn them in groups of four, the way that they are written, so that your fingers just really know what to do here. Uh, if you don't, you, it's easy to get thrown off. Now, one thing to look at as you're learning this, okay, and you've done a lot of process there, you've done a lot of articulations, you've got the tempo up to a certain speed, is now look at the first notes of every slurred. So we have the first of your groups of three. And if you just keep your eyes on those, because your fingers already know the other notes, then you just are going down a scale. It's a G, then it's an F natural, then it's an E flat, then it's a D, then it's a C, a B flat, an A, G, F, E flat, D, C, B flat, and that's where we start doing a little bit of repetition through there. So you're going all the way down, and if you just keep that in mind, that'll help keep your fingers straight. Here too, because they are in this triplet slur, they tend to rush. They just get faster and faster and faster and faster. So keep a hold of what you're doing. Let's go back and see if we can match up our triplets by going back to the top of the page here. All right, so we, we got through that. I don't think I was actually playing it as piano as I probably would like to perform it that way. Uh, I was listening to the principal flute of the LA Phil play this. He's got that on YouTube and his name escapes me right at the moment. Um, but Dennis Boryakov, that's his name. He's got a great rendition of this on YouTube. And uh, when I heard him do this part, of course, he was going at a blistering pace. Uh, when I heard him do this part, the only thing that I was really thinking is that there were mice scampering down the keys. It just it just flowed. And it was just light and soft. And that's how you want it to feel like. If you're just scampering. <laughs> Just let it scamper, just make it easy, not tough. Now let's, at the end of this, when you're going your F sharp to D and then F sharp to C sharp down there and you're doing a little bit of retardando. One big key here, don't get too slow too soon because what happens is that you will run out of air and you won't be able to make it. You have to really keep that tempo going. Uh, I'll start at, um, let's see, measure one, that would be 
Oh, I can't see. I better put my glasses on. That is measure 119. And let's actually go back to 118, 117. So maybe I'll keep my glasses on here. All right, so we're back to 117 just before we have the retinue en peu. So a little bit of a retardando. Not a lot. It's a little bit until you get to that long part, L-E-N-T, where it's, okay, very slow. You really slow down there. And that's easy to do. You want to slow down. You've just been doing all this fast stuff. So 117. Now it's easy to get through that with the breath because uh, I just started, you know, halfway through that, that uh, long run. Uh, when you're doing this, I think you have to reach down. I think it's the D is okay. You're, you're doing uh, A, F sharp, D, B, G, D, A, F sharp, D, B, G, C sharp. That's when it gets a little tricky just to reach that. And then what I do is I keep my fingers here. So that's B, G, C sharp. That's the first C sharp I get to. And then it's A, F sharp. And I'm not going to use my pinky because I'm going to keep it down on the C sharp key. So B, G, C sharp, A, F sharp, C sharp, B, G, and all my fingers are right there. I've got that pinky right there. He's not leaving that key until I don't have to play that C sharp anymore. B, G, C sharp, and now we're in the triplet, the real triplets, A, F sharp, C sharp, B, G, you get to breathe here, C sharp, E flat, and then D. So if you keep your pinky over that C sharp, you're going to have a much better chance of reaching that note. Also remember, what do you have to do in this low register? Don't blow so much air. It's tricky because you've been playing high at measure 113 and your you're, you know, adrenaline's going and you're running down those keys uh, and you, you just have to hold back that air as you get here. It, as soon as you see the retine, un pu, make sure that you hold in your air. Don't let it out. Okay. You have this pause and then you're back to a tempo. And guess what? You get to do this again. But I like it here. It's a forte. You can do it a forte. If you've really been working, just give it a little bit extra and it comes out as a forte. Let's do that again. All right, then your forte. So that was mezzo forte. Now your forte. Oh, I played it E natural. Let's play this E flat. Now that's a fun part. You get to just, it's, it's a little slow down in all the action that's been going on and you get to just play long lines. You get to play it a forte. It's just really beautiful right through there. So allow yourself to express that and make sure it's very legato. It's not a lot of staccato stuff. Make sure you do. There's a lot of articulation here. You know, a slur here, tongue this one. Um, so if you go... All those extra little uh, articulations, the tonguing that's in there. The composer wrote that and it really makes the section. And we'll keep going. And I really like that little passage. Um, is it, it's just falling down the the little run there yum but -da -dum, ba -da -da dum and then you crescendo because we're going to keep moving on with this melody but it, it just you're not doing a whole lot with it just let it fall down and then here's your really big double forte and make sure you do slur two tongue one slur two tongue one on that Oh, <laughs> 
and bring it up really big. Now, as you go up that run to that high A, uh, it tends to be overblown. It's a double forte, for goodness sake, and you're going to blow more air on it. Here's one way to keep the uh, pitch down. As you go up, move your air down. So as I'm going up, I'm aiming that air down as I go higher so that I can keep that pitch from, you know, not being too high. There's also another technique and that's putting a little bit of air. So as I'm going up there, I have some extra air in this cheek. Air can sometimes in your cheeks and you can experiment with either both upper lip also can help bring the pitch down. Okay. You're there. Now we, we come to the Okay, so like the beginning, except again, it's a little bit uh, higher. So instead of, um, what was it, E? Ta -ta, e to F, we're now doing an F sharp to G. Make sure you're practicing that so you get those out. Now here, uh, also make sure you get those accents on the 16th notes, their breath ac accents. So I got it eventually there, and now I'm going to keep going. So I put air in my cheeks for that high A, and then we keep going. So I think what we hear with Inesco here is he likes to say things twice. He likes to repeat things. Uh, you do this, and basically those were in triplets, and now we're going to basically do that except in sixteenth notes. All right, now here we go with some more of those slurring every other groups of 16th notes, and they can be really tricky depending on how fast you go. Again, almost all the time it's because you're rushing. Your, your fingers are rushing and your tongue can't keep up, or your tongue is rushing, which is usually not the case, but it's usually the fingers are rushing and you just can't keep. So. Okay, so what you want to do is practice that double tonguing, just your regular double tonguing. With your metronome, your metronome is your best friend. Do this with a metronome, do it slowly. Don't even put those slurs on because what you have to do is teach your fingers not to rush. Then when they get going, and you feel like you really got a hold of that, your fingers are in control, try to put the slurs on. And then it's it's tricky. It's a tricky little passage there to get it faster and faster. You've just really got to keep with that metronome and have the metronome build your technique one click at a time. Um, when you come down to this part, again, you've been blowing air because you're starting that section with a high G and now you're ending with a D to C sharp. You've got to hold it in. So as you come down that run, as soon as you see that D, stop blowing air, hold it, and use the air that's here. 
Okay, now we're getting to our climax. So you start your uh, forte here. And if you can just get that crescendo, that sforzando will come. I'm just pushing it up. And then... And here we go, the second time, we say it again slightly differently. And then these. Okay, your octaves, your little grace notes, the best thing to do is aim low and keep your air low, but then get the high note. So I don't want to do it's way too long. It's going to take too much. So I want to do it with my air pressure. I'm just going to keep my amateur pretty steady and use my air pressure to just give me that little bit of a lift. And then when you get to the sforzando, You're allowed to take a breath right here. I like to not because I feel like I'm in the groove and that would just make my fingers mess up, but you can. And again, amateur still, just leave it the way it is for the F sharp. Change it here for a B. And you've got that sforzando right there. So it's all about this. You get much more flexibility right here. Just keep that embouchure steady. And then make sure you're tonguing. And tongue that sforzando note. Okay, now we're back to what again? Our original tonguing down here. But we're building. And then here's another spot. So you know what to do. Tongue those, use your metronome, uh, take it apart. Don't do all the slurs, the usual. Okay, now we have groups of sixes and then a groups of four, and then groups of sixes, and then we start a chromatic run going up. And here is where also that my students tend to just rush through this and then make the groups of sixes and the groups of four be the same thing. So with your metronome, you're going to think one, two, three, four, five, six, one, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, and really feel how fast are you doing them? What is your tempo that you want to get to? Okay. Now I would do all of these little things with different articulations and the metronome and just making sure I know what the notes are. I, my fingers can really move. And then I'm going to say, all right, if I'm going one, two, three, four, five, six, one, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, I'm going to say, I'm going to start on five, six, right? Five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six. So I'm going to think five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, one. Five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, one. Five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, one. I'm going to try that to make sure I have groups of six. All right. But how does that contrast with my four? So I'm going five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, one. Um, if you say one, uh, and, uh, I'm going to say, uh, and, uh, so, uh, and, oh, uh, two, uh, and, uh, wow. Don't they sound amazingly slow after your groups of six? Five, six, one, two, uh, I'll try that again. And five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, one. Five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, and a two, uh, and a five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, and a one, uh, and a two, uh, and a one. Now, of course, I'm going to perform that faster, but that helps me really feel what the tempo is here so that I can really play the sixes different than I play the fours. Let's see, so let me get my tempo. And 
and we've made it. Here's the only thing I want to add to this. When you start your chromatic run going up, what always happens is the fingers get away from the tongue. The tongue and the fingers, they don't match up because starting on the and a, and a wanna and a, that that is never, uh, for a lot of students, it's never right exactly on the second half of beat one. So it's very good to just practice just doing that measure. So I'm going to And I tell them, nobody's going to know if you put just a little bit of an accent on the E flat. Because if you put that one exactly on beat two, the rest of them will follow suit. It's that measure that kills the whole rest of it. So really make sure that you practice that. Again, here's a 16th note group. Use your articulations. Get that in your fingers. Make sure it's very, very steady. The muscles are all working the same. And then work on that measure. Tugga, 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 dum. Dia, tugga, tugga, dum. Dia, tugga, tugga, dum. And then get faster and faster. But make sure that measure does not rush and that you land beat two exactly on beat two. Well, that's the whole piece. That's your presto. It's a nice movement. When you're playing it, it really goes pretty fast and you're done with it in very few minutes here. There's some great, great recordings on YouTube. Listen to them. Get it in your ear. The piano part is fabulous, so if you have a chance to play with a piano player, do this whole piece with a pianist. And if not, I've played with YouTube so many times and with whoever's playing and I, because I don't have a pianist available. And so that I learn the piano part when I'm preparing a recital, I want to learn the piano part before I meet with my pianist. And so I will just play along with some recording that I find on, on any of our um, Spotify's or YouTube's or any of those and make sure that I learn that piano part so that I really know how my part fits because really in the end it's a duet. Well have fun working on your Contabulate Presto. I'm going to get back to work.